All right, guys, so we have our uh, surface conform now. And uh, the next step we want to do is um, start to build our trusses. And we're going to use this uh, reference geometry because if you look at it, um, if I actually come in here and what I'll do is I'll, I'll right click and just kind of hide that surface. Um, so if I look at my geometry here, it's, you know, it's, it's fairly regular in terms of the spacing. So when I come in here and I do my trusses, I want each of these points to kind of be one of my connector points for my truss members. Um, so with that being said, if I if I kind of unhide um, unhide what I just just hit here, you know you can see if I want to try and slice this up and pull some some spline data off of here and you know do some manipulations with it. One I have cuts in it, so I'm going to have gaps in my my spline data when I start to go in and cut and extract this stuff. And you know also it's not very evenly spaced because we just threw that subdivide modifier on there to get it divided up enough to have it smoothly merge down to that surface set you know we manipulated so you know again it's it's not kind of the the best thing to do um, in terms of, of building my trust in a, a very fluid and, and quick way so what I want to do is I'm gonna first hit T for top and Z for zoom um, and with that surface selected I'm gonna go under tools and go into array and I, I just kinda wanna move get this a copy of this off to the side to work with um, so I wanna under type of object select copy I'm going to select two for my count so I have my original one and then I want to make a second copy over to the side and then if I look at my um, axis here I have our axes I have Y and then I have my X axis so I'm gonna come over here and just um, say a number like 2,000 feet you know I, th I think I said 1500 in my uh, my you know um, word document but then I'll hit preview uh, just to make sure that oops, do I have it What is it doing? 2, 1D, copy, display this box preview. Let's try and hit reset. Let's try this again. 2, number and array, and we want, um, we want the X, X in 2,000 feet. I don't have my lock on, preview. Oh, so I guess it's uh, actually pretty far away from my my surface so you know maybe 2,000 feet is uh, is a bit much maybe I come in here then and, and move this back like a uh, thousand feet so then you know if I were to move this back a thousand feet you see it lines right up with my with my original surface um, but again I kind of had that copy with the array tool and and I'll just put it out there a thousand feet just to kind of get it off um, off to the side, and I, I think I used uh, a 1500 in the you know the, the Word document when I went through this the first time. But you know, I basically just want that copy off there to the side. I then want to come in and I'm going to import that same geometry that we used before, the roof plan detail, and you know, same stuff as before, but all the vertices okay. Now you know I have all this stuff kind of going on, and it's hard to see. In order to kind of see quickly, I can hit hold shift on the keyboard and then G. That gets rid of all of my actual geometry that is in the file and now what is visible is just my spline data so then I can grab this I can right click here and I can move this over a thousand feet hit enter I'll hit sh hold shift and hit G again and now you can see that's lined up with the surface the same way my um, geometry over here is lined up with the surface the only difference is now I want to go into the editable spline and I want to select all of these guys in the middle. I, I could do it like that, hit delete, or I could select this, hit control I, hit delete, because really what I'm interested in is this, this outer portion, this outer ring. All right, now for this next step, you kind of have to be very careful um, with, with how you do it, because what we want to do is essentially cut out um, the shape of the roof, you know, in the geometry. And you know the reason why I didn't do the the first step uh, like this is because you know I wanted to show you one the conform tool, but also two, um, you know if you have a lot of different splines like uh, like I did here where you actually have these kind of slots cut into um, your roof to let you know some some light in from above, when you go and try and shape merge it up and cut it out of uh, like a plane like this, um, sometimes it can do some weird things. So it's not always the best method for doing it depending on what kind of spline you're, you're working with you know how many how many vertices you have that you're, you're merging it up to 
um, what your geometry is like that you're merging it up to. So there's there's a lot of kind of um, room for error, if you will, um, in the method. But you know, for something like this where it's just a plane and and one kind of simple shape to cut it out and use it for reference to build my trusses, it's 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 uh, you know very very good technique to use. Um, I just have to make sure I go into my top view, so T for top and Z for zoom. And within my top view, I can now come back to my create panel and go to compound objects. And again, it's very important I do this for my top view. Um, and so I'm in the compound objects. I select shape merge with my geometry selected. Okay. Once I have that done, I can select pick shape here under my options. And when I come over with my cursor and I hover over that shape, uh, let me actually, one second, my air conditioner is coming on. Let me turn that off so you guys can hear me. So now when I hover, hover over this shape and I select my shape, what that does is that automatically comes up and cuts out that shape into that surface. So you can see my edges have been created based on that shape below. So I can now turn off pick shape, come into my modified geometry. You can see, see she, you can see it says shape merge here in the modifier stack. I want to put an edit poly on top of that and go into my polygon sub objects. Those layers are automatically selected because it's it's cut out, you know, that's the area it's cut out. So it kind of by default selects that area that is cut out. Now if I want to get this area, the other area outside of here selected and kind of deleted, again, keyboard shortcut override toggle needs to be off. I do control I to get over here. And you know, I, I could just delete it out um, if I wanted to do that. Uh, the other thing I could do, you know, we could do if you really didn't want to delete it out, oh, maybe I'm going to do some other manipulations with this later. Um, you know, you could do the same thing we did before where we change the material ID, you do a volume select by ID, and then you delete out the mesh, and then you put a new edit poly on top of it to extract the, extract the data. So you could do something like that if you want to keep your surface intact. But you know, I already have a copy over here of the exact same thing. So I'm just going to hit delete, delete that off of there. I'm going to go back into my, my top view and actually I'm going to go over, I'm going to uh, come here and we'll get out of my polygon mode. And I just want to delete out that shape because I'm, I'm basically done with it now. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go back into my top mode. I'll come into now my edge layer. Um, and I'm going to go to my graphite modeling tools because there's a handy uh, loop mode here where I can click on the loop mode and when I click it selects this entire line. Um, if I come in here and just select, you know, loop um, with this off, it, you know, it, I have to come up here, click loop, and then it selects everything. You know, because it's just selecting one portion and then I hit loop and it selects the whole thing. So if I have this activated, I can quickly just click, you know, I could even zoom out some, click here gizmos kind of getting in the way but I can you know quickly kind of do that and get all of my geometry selected very quickly and again if I had just um, done that same selection technique with that off it would have only grabbed you know these segments here in that row so I would have had to do that for each one of these rows if I didn't have that looping function on you know it's just, and it's the same with the ring function um, if I needed to grab these guys going in the other direction um, you know running this way you know, I, can, I could do it like that, but I, you know, I have to kind of go in here and grab each of these or, you know, go in here and grab each of these. So you can see, you know, it, it's grabbing all of them at once, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's not exactly quite as quick as just coming into the loop mode, um, which I find is just a little bit faster. And let's see if I can do this here, just grab all of these guys. Once I have them selected, right now it's geometry. And within my edit edges here, within my um, edge sublevel, I can create a shape or you know basically line work from that geometry and from those edges that I have selected. So I'm going to click settings here. I want to make sure it's a linear shape. I do not want it to smooth my shape because smooth is, is something like a NURB surface or a NURB curve in in Rhino, and you know it's it's something you can do in Max, but you know, I mean, like, it's always better to work crudely, quickly, and then at the end, apply some mesh smooth to your stuff to get, get it looking the way you need it to look, um, you know, versus trying to do, do NURB stuff and, you know, have your computer kind of bogged down by, 
by all this complex stuff. I know even Rhino, you know, when you get really complex curvatures and stuff like that in there and you have a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on, it can get bogged down pretty heavily too. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here for this. As soon as I click OK, again, if I hold, sh uh, well, first of all, I'll come up here and I'll just get out of my edge mode just so I'm off of there. So you see it's kind of overlapping. I really can't tell. I can kind of tell by color what's going on, but a very easy way to just grab those lines is if I hold shift, hit G, you know, my lines are right there and that's the line data that I've extracted from my surface. I can then grab that line data, come into my spline subcategory. Now, you know, the spline subcategory is a little bit different. I have a vertex, a segment, and um, you know, a, a spline subcategory. But I can come into here and select all of my splines and what I want to do is actually, actually I want to go into my front view. So F for front and Z for zoom. I'll hold shift and I just want to make a copy of these down. And then I'll hit T for top and Z for zoom. And I want to drag these guys down and make a copy just kind of over. So if then if I hold alt and my scroll uh, wheel here button, you can see coming in here, it's just kind of like a on a diagonal basically is what I'm creating. Um, you know, and, and you can also go in, for example, like if I'm building my truss and I say, okay, I'm gonna have like some points going here. So I'm connecting this dot to this dot and that dot to that dot. Um, you know, maybe I don't want these dots at the end. So I wanna clean that up a little bit. I can select those dots and just hit delete to kind of clear them off. Um, so I'm just cleaning those vertices off on the end so that, you know, in the end, uh, you're not gonna have a, a truss member that's that small. Um, you know, obviously that's like even spacing you know, but where that comes in and, you know, it's close enough that you can just kind of arbitrarily come in and say, okay, we, we don't need those uh, two points at the end um, at that very tight spacing. So again, I'm, I'm just cleaning this up a little bit um, just so that, you know, when I go to build my trusses, it it doesn't look funky on the ends and turn, you know, especially here where it's very, very close um, to the end segment, I can definitely delete those off. You know, but also be wary because you see here that geometry is uh, bending there, uh, you know, at a, at a different angle. And when I delete that off, it kind of just straightens it out a little bit. So it's not going to match your surface like perfectly if you kind of come in here and clean these up. But, you know, just for purposes of kind of clarity, I, I definitely want to just kind of get rid of some of these ones that are, are very close to uh, close to the end here. And uh, just do a few more of these, and I, I think that should be good enough. There's looks like there's two more over here, and that should do it. So we kind of have all of our spline work, and now we need to come in here and um, actually begin to build our trusses off of this spline work. Um, so I, I, I'm going to stop my video actually here, uh, just because, like I said, I don't want these videos to get too long in length. Um, so I'm going to stop this video here. And when we pick back up, we're going to continue building the truss.